stories are not just the things that happen to people or the things that people do. Stories are who people are. And to illustrate my point, I'm going to tell you two stories about crazy people. On November 3rd, 1966, a month and a half before I was born, the crew of the SS Jalisco sat huddled together, surveying their options and wondering how things went to hell so fast. Their ship was sinking. The Jalisco was a unique ship. She was a decommissioned World War II era freighter. She was incredibly strong. She was built with a hull of concrete poured over a lattice of steel rebar. And she would need to be tough because she was going to have a unique purpose. Jalisco's motley crew included a Native American boxer, a renowned deep sea diver named Jim Houts, and a professional golfer named Joe Kirkwood. Joe Kirkwood was also very well known at the time because he was also an actor, and he had played a character, a boxer himself, called Joe Palooka on the big screen in films that included the big fight. The purpose of Joe Palooka, Jim Houts, and the rest of their crew seems insane. They planned to build their own country. Now, to do this, they took this ship, the SS Jalisco, and sailed her south, they towed her, pardon me, they towed her south from San Francisco behind a really sturdy tugboat. Her destination was the summit of an undersea mountain 100 miles off the coast of California, which is called the Cortez Bank. It's one of the most treacherous spots in the Pacific. They didn't really know that. The, the, the Cortez Bank, as I said, is, is very far offshore, but it's also very shallow. The plan was to take this ship and flood it, and then eventually scuttle it on the very shallowest point of the Cortez Bank, which is a, a sort of mesa. 12 feet deep. It's called the Bishop Rock. Once that was done, the crew would be able to take a flag, post it out on the forward mast, and hoist it. They would surround the ship with boulders, huge boulders, to form a breakwater. Then they would take that flag, and they would declare their man-made island, the country of Abalonia. Now, when they did this, they would then be able to declare, this is international waters, they'd be able to declare fishing rights for all the prolific waters around the Cortez Bank. But even more importantly, because these were big thinkers, they would be able to take more boulders and landfill waste from the city of Los Angeles, tons and tons of it. They'd already signed a contract with Los Angeles to do this put it down on the seafloor and build a glittering resort in the middle of the ocean. Abalonia, hotels, golf course, airstrip, casino. They had plans all drawn up. The ship was towed into position above the Bishop Rock, and an hour later, things seemed okay. They permanently locked the anchor into position, and then there was no turning back. But it was at precisely that point that the crew had a horrible realization. An ocean that had been as calm as a lake was suddenly starting to stir, and the Jalisco was swaying. What was happening was forerunner swells from a storm thousands of miles away from California had begun to march down the California coast. Now, these forerunners start off very low above the water, but they roll through the water at 70 miles an hour, and they grow by the minute. 
These swells were coming out of waters off of Cortez Bank a mile deep. They marched up the volcanic flanks of Cortez Bank, and they had nowhere to go but up. And within minutes, the crew of the Jalisco would be battling for their lives at the mercy of waves five stories tall. We see Joe Kirkwood perched out on the, the mast that he was going to raise his flag from. And this is what he said. Before me loomed an enormous wall of blue-green water, 45 feet or more. The fish in it were plainly visible. Fast forward to January 5th, 2008. Thanks to a great education from the University of Georgia, um, I had been asked by the New York Times to cover a massive storm that was sweeping the West Coast, one of the biggest storms recorded in North Pacific history. This storm had 1,000-mile-wide swath of hurricane-force winds, and it slammed the coast. And as you might imagine, it also generated enormous swells in the open ocean. And rather than battening down the hatches, one group of big wave surfers, Mike Parsons, Brad Gerlach, Grant Baker, and Greg Long, loaded up jet skis and a speedboat with a brave photographer named Rob Brown. And they motored out into the teeth of this storm to the Cortez Bank, 100 miles offshore. And when they got out there, they found waves that were between 80 and 100 feet high. And they surfed them right above the wreckage of the SS Jalisco, all by themselves. Now, these waves were so big and moving so fast that there were points where their surfboards, despite moving at the speed of a roller coaster, were barely able to stay ahead of these waves, barely able to stay ahead, going as fast as you could imagine, because not only are they going downhill, they're going forward. You have to think of their speed as accelerated even more. And then Grant Baker, one of the surfers, said something to me that, that really stuck with me. He said, there was a chance that you might have had a scenario where one of us wiped out on one of these waves and we were simply swept away into that white water. And even if we survived getting swept away into that white water and that wipeout, we might be swept out into the open ocean 100 miles offshore, no land within 50 miles, never to be seen again. And I thought to myself, my God. <laughs> After that, I became obsessed with the Cortez Bank as well. Um, and the stories of these guys it could have stopped right there, you know? I mean, as a reporter, you report a story, then you go on to the next story. But in this case, these sto this story was not about just these guys. It wasn't about just what they did. To me, it came to be about, who are these people? Who would take that kind of risk? Why would you want to do that? And so, what started out as a simple reporting assignment, to me, morphed into a book that I would spend three years writing, uncovering the stories of the Cortez Bank. I thought it was going to take me a year, and it took three, because as it turned out, the more stories I reported on, the more stories revealed themselves. The Cortez Bank has had divers and other shipwrecks on it. The USS Enterprise, the longest carrier in the US Navy, nuclear-powered, crashed into the Cortez Bank and nearly sank in the 80s. Very little known story. Um, other divers have been swept out to sea there. Their rescues were pure miracle. And I wanted to know, though, what would, what would drive a person to take these kind of risks? And my point about stories being who people are, it, it really came to resonate with me in this because ostensibly, anybody who would go out to a seamount 100 miles off the coast of California is, and start up their own nation is crazy. That's insane. Who would do that? Who would go 
100 miles offshore and surf 80-foot waves. That's insane. Who's going to do that? Well, it turns out that Jim Houts, the, one of the guys from the SS Jalisco, had never been interviewed before. He was a Navy underwater demolitions expert in an earlier life and an expert diver. Here we see a picture. Jim was once asked to dive into a tiny fissure in the earth in Death Valley called the Devil's Hole, which opens up to reveal itself into a vast underground sea. It's a place not even many people know about. He did this all to rescue a lost diver. And in the process, he set a world deep diving record, besting a record set by Jacques Cousteau, over 300 feet into this cave, all to rescue a lost diver. Eventually, Jim, ha Jim Houts' story revealed itself, but so did Joe Kirkwood's. Joe Kirkwood's story revealed itself in the form of a manuscript that was sent to me anonymously. And I found, after reading his manuscript and his rendition of this story, that Joe Kirkwood was a latter-day Meriwether Lewis or William Clark. I mean, Manifest Destiny was this guy's calling, his raison d'etre. It was just an extreme way of doing it. Joe Kirkwood's mania was such that he traveled out to Cortez twice before the Jalisco sank, and both times his boat sank and he had to be rescued by the Coast Guard <laughs> from certain death. Now, these surfers also, they're not the crazy people that you make them out to be. Grant Baker's dad was murdered when he was 17. Mike Parsons nearly drowned at Mavericks alongside another surfer named Mark Fu, who did drown at Mavericks. Greg Long would be held down by waves at the Cortez Bank for so long that he blacked out and drowned. His rescue and resuscitation is nothing less than a miracle. Now, getting to the point of telling these guys stories was what I was trained for as a journalist, but it, but it gets to a bigger point. You, you can't know somebody's story by just looking at a screen or at a quick little description of something. If you really want to understand what drives people and what makes them think, you've got to, you've got to understand what are their motives, what are their motivations, how did they grow up? What were their hardships that they faced? What are their demons? And how might they even be genetically hardwired to behave? All these things have to reveal themselves if you really want to tell a story, especially a story about people. Now, these guys who would want to summit a watery Everest at the Cortez Bank, you ask them what their motives are, why they would want to do this, and yeah, the reasons vary. But really, they, they dovetail into a famous quote by Sir Edmund Hillary, because it's there. I had to gain the trust of these guys to be able to tell their story. And I had to spend a lot of time with them. And eventually, they trusted me enough to take me out to Cortez Bank to see these spectacular waves. And it was the most surreal experience of my life. And I'm now as addicted to going out there as they are. It's, the waves, when they break, they sound like buildings collapsing. Put it that way. It's, it's a completely surreal experience. And to that end, I'll leave you with a quote from Greg Long from my book, which was titled Ghost Wave. Greg described being out at the Cortez Bank sitting out there thusly. When you're paddling alone, all alone out there, when you really look at the place and feel its immensity, you can't just help but feel that there's something so much greater, so much more significant at work than you. Does that sound like the talk of a crazy person? Thank you. <laughs>